Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. I am Cedric and uh, as the year comes close to an end I'd like to squeeze in one more anniversary. Um, we've had several anniversaries this year. We've had the Lindemann's 200th anniversary, 40 years Schuf, 20 years VMB, um, Maretsu 150 years but we can't celebrate that on this channel because they only sell in kegs. <laughs> But last year we've had some anniversaries as well. We've had the 150th anniversary of Duvel Moortjat and we also have the 200th anniversary of Rodenbach. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. The 200th anniversary Rodenbach beer, the Red Triple. We are gonna talk about the beer in a few minutes, but first let's look at the brewery because this is a brewery with a whole whole lot of history um, I say 200 years last year was the anniversary so technically they started in 1821 but actually the Rodenbach story far predates that uh, because this story sort of begins uh, more than a hundred years before that so in 1714, uh, Peter Ferdinand Rodenbach is born. He is from Andernach am Rhein in Germany, not to be confused with Andernach in Luxembourg. And he grows up to become a military doctor uh, or medic. And he joins the Austrian armies um, yeah, in their move through Belgium. But unfortunately, he is captured. He is taken prisoner. But in 1749 he is freed and he settles down as a physician in Rousselare. Uh, he was captured in Lille. Um, yeah, he moved to Rousselare after his uh, being freed and he settles down as a physician with his wife Johanna. Now, a bunch of years later, his oldest son, uh, Peter Ferdinand Jr., takes over the business as a physician, but He's not really cut out for that trade. Um, and in 1797, Peter Ferdinand Jr. buys a brewery Het Paradise or The Paradise in the Spanjestraat or Spain Street. I'd love to say that this is where the Rodenbach brewery story starts, but nope. He buys a brewery and he repurposes it as a gin still or a Geneva still. Peter Ferdinand Jr. also has a son and his son uh, Alexander which is a name that will come back in the Rodenbach portfolio uh, because they have a beer called Alexander spoiler alert but Alexander uh, in his turn also buys a brewery in the same street so uh, Spanjestraat actually had four or five breweries, I believe. Um, and Alexander buys a brewery Clan Spanje or Small Spain in Spain Street. Pretty original. He actually keeps it as is. And in 1821, uh, Alexander and his brothers and sister, Ferdinand Gregor, Pedro and Amalia, also by brewery Norbert or Norbert. This is where actually the Rodenbach brewery is started because before that the Rodenbach name wasn't connected to the brewery. In 1830 Pedro, one of the brothers, actually led the Belgian Revolution leading to the Belgian independence uh, and this has nothing to do with the brewery story, but I just want to tell you this to illustrate the influence that the Rodenbach family actually had in the Belgian history. Now, also, a lot of these stories are uh, myths or urban legends, but this actually is true. And uh, another uh, Rodenbach family member, Constantin, some people say he wrote the Brabantson, the, the Belgian national anthem, but of course uh, it takes like one minute of Google food to see that Jean Val actually wrote that. But um, 
a lot of changes because the Brabant Sun actually was changed two times, so the third version, a lot of those changes were contributed uh, by Constantin Rodenbach. Just a little side story there. Now, in 1836, so 15 years after the start, Pedro buys out the rest of the family and him and his wife, Regina, who was a brewer's daughter from Mechelen, actually ran and expanded the brewery from then on. Uh, it was mainly Regina who did all the work, but of course, uh, attributed to Pedro's name. Now, they um, led and expanded the brewery up until 1864, so almost 30 years. And they even put in the first steam-powered machine in a brewery. Then in 1864, their son Edward, um, who actually owned a mechanical spinning mill, takes the lead in the brewery. Uh, he installed a whole bunch of new technology. He put in a new malt factory, an oast house, a fermentation hall, uh, a new brewing room, a new uh, cellar to put the stock in. So he expanded again heavily and very heavily. He also, so Edward, also has a son, Eugene. And Eugene studied uh, yeah, in England. He actually studied uh, porter brewing and specialized in or mainly focused on the intentional acidification of beers in South England. And in 1878, Eugene becomes the manager and actually refines the vinification process in the oak fooders, the oak uh, fermentation vats. Then in 1889, Eugene dies and unfortunately Eugene didn't have any uh, offspring or at least not any sons. And the brewery is left to his, uh, well, to his sisters actually. They take over and they um, start a company, company again under the Rodenbach name. Now we fast forward for about a hundred years. Rodenbach has led the scene when it comes to, uh, yeah, old brown, Flemish brown, whatever you want to call it, uh, red brown even. But in the 1980s, the brewery starts to struggle. Uh, yeah, the markets change and after a few um, yeah, attempts to take over the brewery, the brewery struggles even more and they have no choice but to sell. In 1998, the Palm Brewery from Steenhuffel, uh, again, we're gonna talk about them as well in a few months, I believe. Palm buys out the Rodenbach Brewery. Of course, they keep the name and they keep the beer and everything stays the same. Um, but this is now owned by Palm. Now, again, spoiler alert, uh, a few years later in 2016, Bavaria, uh, Dutch brewery, buys Palm. Uh, <laughs> but again, uh, both beautiful breweries with nice estate, castle, everything uh, up and on. However, apart from the Bavaria story. So 1998, Palm takes over Rollenbach. They also start investing heavily in the Rollenbach story. For example, in 2000, they, uh, well, in June, they opened a new visitor center and a Rollenbach museum. A Rollenbach museum about the beer, but also about the family. Uh, I will put up some family photos somewhere here, so you can see that this is a family with a lot of history, with a lot of characteristic people, uh, and you'll immediately agree that they <laughs> kind of deserve a museum. Um, in 2002, they expand again the brew house. Um, now, up until now, Rollenbach has won over 137 medals 
they have 294 oak footers ranging between 120 and 650 hectoliters and I have some friends uh, Ruth Mike I'm talking about you <laughs> I'm very jealous that had the chance to have dinner uh, in the fermentation hall between the fooders and it must have been beautiful I've only seen the pictures uh, but I'm jealous as hell <laughs> now some of these fooders are um, over 150 years old and are actually protected as a Flemish industrial heritage and it is even said that um, a few of these fooders uh, I believe about five uh, of them were already there when uh, Alexander or when uh, Alexander and Pedro bought the brewery so almost 200 years ago uh, more than 200 years now, ago now now of course many of us know Rodenbach and Rodenbach is uh, synonymous for one certain beer style and that is uh, the Flemish red brown, Flemish brown, the, the red brown ale, whatever you want to call it. But this is a very, very typical style. Um, this is an intentionally acidified uh, beer. Mostly wood aged and it is acidified by uh, lactic acid. Of course to get a yeah, lovely rounded complex and stable beer they blend young and matured acidified and oak matured beer so two or three kinds and by that they ensure the quality as well now of course Rodenbach isn't the only uh, red brown brewer we also have uh, Liefmans who makes Goudenband we have Duchesse de Bourgogne, we have uh, Bourgogne de Flandre, which is sort of a red brown ale. Uh, there are several and there are very good ones as well. But Rodenbach is and will always be the biggest. And of course the biggest name. Who does not know the red R? Another characteristic for the red brown ale is the mixed fermentation. So yeah it's acidified we have the lactic acid uh, that is very present it is oak aged but it is also mixed fermentation meaning the main fermentation um, and, and warm maturation uses top fermenting yeast hence the warm part but then they have a secondary fermentation and aging which actually lasts for two years uh, in oak barrels or vats and that's where you get the, um, the the lactic and the acetic acid bacteria uh, combined with the bretonomaceous yeast that actually form this this very uh, typical taste something else that's quite typical for this style is uh, the use of maize and malt um, they use different malts. They use um, mainly darkened malt, darkened in kilns, um, which contributes to the color. So it's not all from the oak fooders, but it's also from the malt, of course, and the maize to, yeah, to actually lighten it up a bit. Um, of course, it's a different kind of starch. Again, not. Uh, blasting into the chemistry here but there's a, a difference between the sugars and well the, the fermentable sugars and the non-fermentable sugars but different kind of malts that's all that we're gonna remember from today now for their anniversary they did something special of course they started with a lovely black champagne bottle with the nice uh, yeah looks like a chalked uh, signature and that's not all they actually made a completely new beer how did they do this well uh, they didn't just make the Flemish red they also made a triple 
and they blended this up. So this is a limited luxury champagne bottle um, with a certain secret blend of a young triple and two-year-old oak-aged fooder beer. Um, they call it the red triple because it's of course the red beer with the triple. It is said, and I have not tasted this yet, so let's find out. It is said to be mildly acidic, uh, fresh, very refreshing, uh, but still complex. And because it's so fresh and light, it's very drinkable. Now, I say light, it is an 8.2% ABV. Um, we'll see what gives. So, on to the tasting. And I must say that I actually do love this bottle uh, with the nice 200 year logo here. Now, let's see what this bottle says. It is a 75 centiliter bottle. Rodenbach Red Triple is our 200 year anniversary beer created by blending a Belgian triple with a Flemish red brown ale that is matured for two years in 4,000 gallon or 180 hectoliter oak casks. The slightly sour fresh taste, typically for Rodenbeck, creates a refreshingly complex and easily drinkable triple. The malty, fruity and wood aged character of the beer comes to life in your glass and is a true indulgence for all your senses. Now, of course they do know how to sell a beer. Nice black muzzle here to accompany the bottle. Oh, look at that nice CO2. Oh, it smells quite sweet and sour. I could have expected that, but let's have a glass. Yeah. Smells like a uh, softer version of the red brown ale. So I am very, very, very curious about this. Cap this because I don't want to lose all that aroma. This has a beautiful head of foam and it actually does have this orangey red brown color, quite clear. It's a beautiful color actually. Some beige foam. Quite dense, lovely head of foam there. Very active also, a lot of purling, a lot of bubbles. Oh, downright beautiful actually. Like I said, I haven't seen this beer before. Uh, haven't tasted it as well. The aroma is quite weird. Like I said, it's very sweet and sour. Uh, I'd say slightly astringent, but very, very, very um, cool, very refreshing as well. Quite a bit of carbon dioxide too. I would have expected this to have less carbon dioxide. Also, a slight disclaimer, this uh, bottle is about one year old. But that doesn't seem to have affected the beer that much. I'm actually gonna keep this bottle. I'm gonna put a candle on top. Foam doesn't dissipate quickly, which is also a great plus. I get a bit of yeah, citrusy 
fruit smells in, in the nose and also a bit of caramel actually which you would expect for a dark beer or for a dark ale or a brown ale but not not for a red brown and mainly not for a triple so could just be my senses playing me oh wow oh that's very special what am I tasting here I actually do taste some uh, some dark brown sugar some molasses maybe and it's not boozy at all it's actually very um, yeah very refreshing it does have a full mouthfeel a lot of uh, carbon dioxide at present so in the in the mouth as well as in the nose and it is rather sweet too so they must have used quite a, a sweet triple uh, like a caramelites or those regions of triples but i do like the idea of the the triple being blended with the, the red brown ale this is a very drinkable beer as well uh, and I think this is very accessible for for everyone uh, I do believe that a red brown ale is an acquired taste uh, like my favorite is the Duchesse de Bourgogne which is a quite sour astringent one um, Rodenbach is a bit less aggressive but in this case wow this could very well be a gateway uh, beer to the the red brown style oh wow now the original Rodenbach or the red brown uh, in general is often paired with um, yeah, with fresh shrimp mainly in the west of Flanders uh, freshly cut shrimp with greasy cheese with charcuterie with um, yeah fresh meats and the acidity actually sort of neutralizes and accompanies the the fatty tastes of the cheeses and, and the charcuterie um, but this beer is a lot sweeter so I would pair this more with uh, lovely salads or, or yeah things like that maybe even for dessert I would love to try a sabayon with this beer uh, maybe if it was cheaper and uh, easily accessible for everyone but it is limited of course um, and I do love a good stew with uh, a red brown ale and I do think that this would do the trick as well would be a shame to use a beer for, uh, like this for that but I do think that if this was mass produced that would be a good fit it does have this slightly sour edge mainly in the, on the back of the tongue in the throat but in the aftertaste the the sourness actually disappears and what's left is mainly yeah like a sugary molasses taste uh, I actually this is a crazy thought maybe but I think this beer would go awesome with uh, like hearty pancakes uh, the non-sweetened pancakes with uh, a bit of cheddar and some bacon for example or the breakfast pancakes I don't mean drink with breakfast I just mean have this beer with a hearty pancake or with some some goat's cheese or sheep's cheese like manchego or something
okay for me this is a hit um right i was gonna score my beers i would give this an eight eight and a half but let's say an eight because it's a bit too sweet for my taste but it is of course a lovely well-rounded beer a very full mouthfeel uh yeah and the fact that i'm still in doubt of what i'm all what i'm tasting all over makes it a very complex and well thought through beer so yeah let's call it an eighth uh, a four in untapped and yeah let's leave it at that i am gonna think about what i'm gonna do with this bottle i capped it off so i think i'm gonna keep this for later on and i'm gonna try it with that cheese and maybe some smoked fish and yeah i'm gonna finish this in a minute and i'm gonna enjoy every drop of this anywho if you guys can get your hands on one of these uh, yeah make sure to do so i like it like i said it's a bit sweet for my taste but if you like a sweet triple if you like triple d'anvers uh, if you like triple caramelite those kinds of beers pick one of these up and you might discover something about yourself uh, and then try another red brown as usual if you guys like this video uh, let me know hit that thumbs up uh, if you have any questions any comments uh, any remarks anything I forgot uh, or maybe something about the family because history let's say there are a lot of stories about the family so I might have gotten some things wrong uh, let me know down here and I will get back to you as soon as I can if you like this video and you want to see more uh, subscribe hit the bell icon and you'll get notified as soon as I upload something and in the meantime yeah check out the uh, the playlists or anything on the channel I do have playlists uh, ranked by brewery by country and by beer style so yeah enjoy cheers you guys so in the next video